Former President Donald Trump's arrest last week was an historic spectacle. Crowds of all walks gathered outside the Manhattan courthouse. It was an extraordinary event. Vice News' Liz Landers reports from the scene. Trump should be on trial. His white supremacy should be on trial. He's not anti-American. You are. How am I anti-American? Because you're attacking a good man. I haven't even said anything. Former President Trump has kind of gotten exactly what he wanted. This is the outside of the Manhattan courthouse where he will be walking into in a few hours today. Ironically, inside of the courthouse, the former president's lawyers have asked that there not be cameras in there because it might create a circus-like environment. Instead, the circus is out here. Lower Manhattan was swarming with police, press, some protesters, and Trump supporters on Tuesday as the world waited to see the first time a former president would be arrested on criminal charges. A few infamous members of Congress showed up too, relishing the chance for a photo op. We just had an unexpected visitor show up here and everybody has swarmed this area. Apparently it's Congressman George Santos. If the former president committed a crime, should he be held accountable? Not that crime. No, just why not? Let's go, make some room. Make some room. Here is Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's just shown up outside of the courthouse here. But there are so many people, I cannot hear anything or even see her right now. Back up, back up, back up. Let's go. Back up. Let's go. What do you say to Eric Adams? Congresswoman, do you believe that any president of the United States is above the law? Marjorie Taylor Greene is a member of Congress. This is not her city. She needs to go back to her district, do her job for her district, and do her job in Washington. The scene in front of the courthouse was very much on par for anything related to the Trump show. The hype, the frenzy, and a means of distraction from reality. He's three years out of his presidency, but still has the power to summon all of this. What do you make of what's about to happen today in this courthouse? Well, I think it's an assault on decency. They've trumped up some charges, for lack of a better word. It's just par for the course. They always think they got something. And, uh, you know, you look at this city and the turmoil it's in with the crime, people getting mugged on the subways and killed, and they're more concerned about trying to chase down Donald Trump with some bogus charges. The Manhattan DA, of course, presented this to a grand jury, but a grand jury is supposed to be an impartial group of peers. Do you trust the grand jury in this case? Not really, not in this area. I mean, look at the uh, the person that had the job before, and they passed on the charges, and they've just gone through hundreds of thousands of documents, and this is the best thing they could come up with. It's just fascinating to watch this unfold. The journalist there said it was a circus. Well, I'd add it's got more than its fair share of clowns. And despite what the alleged crimes are here, and they're minor, let me tell you, it's clear that not only are Donald Trump's fans following this every move, but almost every kind of crowd seems to be what part of this story. And the polls reveal the Republicans are backing him all the way. His fame, for good or for bad, gives him this celebrity status around the world but we also know it's revered in America. My next guest says Trump's indictment is having a curious resemblance to the spectacle of the O.J. Simpson trial back in 1994. Delighted to welcome Senior Fellow of the United States Centre at the University of Sydney, Stephen Loosely, to the program. Stephen, great to be talking with you. There's an interesting parallel here you've drawn. I hadn't made the link, but how did you come to this conclusion? The uh, the link becomes self-evident, Corey, when you consider the position of uh, of Alan Dershowitz, uh, who was one of O.J. Simpson's dream team in L.A. during the murder trial, and as well of more recent times, one of uh, Donald Trump's lawyers defending him during impeachment proceedings before the U.S. Congress. And it just struck me that uh, the two circumstances were analogous in terms of wanting to win the battle, not so much on the floor of the, the House or in the courtroom, but in the court of public opinion. 
And Dershowitz is, is fascinating, former Harvard uh, professor, a distinguished uh, a commentator and writer on American law. He maintains he voted for Hillary Clinton and he donated to Hillary Clinton's campaign. But he always believed that Trump was getting a raw deal on the impeachment proceedings. So he stepped up, just as he'd stepped up in the uh, uh, in the O.J. Simpson proceedings in 94, uh, 95. And it, it just struck me that Mark Twain was absolutely right when he observed that uh, history never repeats itself but on occasion it does rhyme. And what we're seeing here in any number of ways, celebrity being at the junction of American politics, law and media, is, is being a, a, an extraordinary uh, repeat of, uh, of the kinds of coverage, the kinds of intense scrutiny of OJ Simpson we're now seeing with former President Donald Trump.